Well, you know, after uh, being a product designer for about 20 years, I, I, uh, I was craving to be able to do a space. And the reason being is I, A, wanted to see, you know, be challenged and see what I can do in it. And, uh, and then second of all, because, you know, if you want to touch in a way a different kind of emotional experience of, of humanity, then space is a different animal than an object, let's say, right? But in general, the world's kind of, I re what I realize about the world is, 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 is what I've struggled with. It's very conservative, you know. The majority of the world is super conservative. And I'm, I'm not, at least, you know, it's hard to be that uh, objective of oneself, but it's not like I'm crazy or eccentric. I kind of know what I'm doing. I'm really pragmatic and I'm really down to earth in a way. But the minute people see things like, you know, decoration and color and, you know, these kind of forms I do and all that, most, most, of, the, most of the world is afraid of this. Because the reality is most of the world sees the past and they're not living in the present. They're living in the past. You know. But really, again, just to reiterate this as a designer, you're, you're really here to be so highly perceptive of the present to in order to shape this future. You know, I, I, I am on a mission, yes. You know, I'm, and I, I always, I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge believer that we should be embracing the time we live in. Like really, like wow, you know? I got to design the first restaurant for Morimoto, who was like an iron chef. Uh, very famous from television and I got to do his first restaurant and I did that project and I was and I, I you know I have to say like just for the scale I actually had no idea what I was doing you know the, on the human scale I knew really good because I knew understood tables chairs all that kind of thing but in the sense of sort of understanding space planning and making sure a restaurant can really be organized and work you know I went through a lot and I, I, I ended up fortunately I, I guess I realized I was kind of better than I thought I was at doing it, I ended up at a really successful restaurant, which until today in Philadelphia, it's, it's his most successful restaurant. And it, and it stood up beautifully, physically, you know, which, uh, which I was very proud of. And then that kind of, in a way, was a domino effect for me doing a lot more projects. And then I did my first hotel in Athens, Greece, uh, with uh, Dacus Yanu, and I loved that project because uh, it was the first boutique hotel, 54 rooms. And in those experiences, I started trying to do things that uh, kind of created uh, a little, injected a little bit of humor, but also injected a kind of a positive emotional spirit, which I realize is what I try to do in my objects too in product design, is to make people feel alive and feel very, very happy and, and, and almost like aware, uh, phenomenologically, like aware that they exist. That, that, that moment that you feel that you're alive is what I was trying to touch in all my projects. The hotels I'm working on, every one of them, I think about this kind of idea that you're there for a very short period of time, that you should have this experience that you would never have anywhere else. And I love this, is to try to go home and then you realize that your physical environment you live in is really banal and backward and you've got to make some changes in your life. You know? So I'm kind of like, in a sense, the impetus or how can I say, a provocateur to get people to think about new space, about, about the way they could um, be living, let's say. A uh, project Tel Aviv right now, for example, which is, you know, um, it's a small boutique hotel in a fantastic little area, and it's a Bauhaus building from the 1930s, and, uh, and there's 3,000 actually Bauhaus projects in Tel Aviv that they're all, you know, renovating, which were all the architects that kind of fled Germany in the, in, in the uh, 40, 30s and 40s. And um, so I decided the interior of the hotel would be Bauhaus 21st century. So I, all I thought about is the fact that if Bauhaus was existing today, as a school, what would his pedagogy do, be and what would it be doing? So I took that approach of it. So there's these kind of nice little experiences as an example is when you get your little object when you enter the hotel, that little object you put it in your pocket and then that little object guides you throughout the entire experience, meaning that it will, when you get on the elevator, it will take you to your floor 
when the door is open, the light LED will take you to your room. The door of your front of your hotel will open automatically because it's in your pocket. When you're in your room, the lights say C, blah, 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 all go on because you have this thing in your pocket. So it's like your little, um, how can I say, your, your uh, nucleus for a good experience in a way. And then, you know, so the aesthetics of the space start to speak about the same thing. Aesthetics start to speak about the digital age. And I, I do in a lot of my work a kind of ornamentation, kind of language where I try to speak about data, about computers, about what we can do with 3D softwares. Because these are my tools that afford me to do original things. And I'm such a believer, and I'm one of those artists, I always say there's two types of artists. There's the artists that grasp immediately onto new technologies. So we saw that with Xerox art in the 50s. We saw that with video when it started in the late 70s. We saw that, you know, film, blah, blah, blah. So these artists said, oh, new piece of technology, what can I do with it? And then there's the other artists who are more, let's say, conventional or traditional, and technology doesn't necessarily play a role. And I'm that type of artist where the technology is inspiring to me. When I'm sitting here with my staff and I'm on a computer, the things we can do, those are the things that start to inspire and I think are going to shape our world. And we're seeing that as a movement in architecture right now also. We're finally starting to see some buildings around the world that are really um, a result of our 3D tools. You know, so. Anyway, with that said, you know, I did, I did a subway station in Naples, which is probably one of the projects I'm most proud of, my interior spaces. And, uh, and doing that subway station was really interesting because I started it way back in 2004. And it took about seven, eight years because of just you know, political issues in Naples and things, but it finally got built. So I saw my ideas back from 2004, you know, being realized in 2011 <laughs> or 12. It was quite, quite interesting. But in that whole experience of subway was exactly what I was trying to do, what I would try to do in a hotel or a restaurant or a home, personal home or anything, is that you've got six minutes in that station at the most. So what can I discuss or, or comment on or how can I touch you or how can I motivate you emotionally and sensorially in six minutes? That was my kind of approach. Um, and, uh, and especially when you're seven in the morning and you have to like go to university or work and you're, you know, the last thing you're interested in is, is being part of the world, you know? So you have your cup of coffee in your hand and you start going into the subway and it's like, a, it's alive and it wakes you up and it's, it's uh, informative and it's a bit of, a bit of infotainment. And you go, when you go downstairs in the piazza, for example, the first thing is all the tiles, which are really conventional tiles that remind you of Paris or New York subway stations, you know, these kind of white tiles. They all have text written on them. There's 2,000 words there that never existed 30 years ago. So all those words, every day you walk down there, you're going to kind of see some words that are, you know, that are our new global vocabulary, that are an international language that we all use. So that's just the beginning. You come into a space that is extremely amorphous inside, and uh, the way it's lit and everything, and there's a massive sculpture I did called Seven Sins, and it's sitting there, this object, the Seven Sin object, which is quite nice because it, 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 uh, it's cantilevered the way it looks. The floors are, are, have all these changing digital prints on them, and these digital prints are embedded in the ceramic, and the ceramic tile technology, we had to find a company and experiment for six months to try to get the, 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 the patterns embedded nine, or eight millimeter into the ceramics so those tiles would last at least 40 years for foot traffic. Um, so what I love, and I love these kind of projects, and I think this comes from my industrial design background actually, is that I love the idea of A, finding new technologies to build and to do things with, and, but also that there's so much rigorous criteria, like in public spaces there's so much to worry about. Just like if I design a, a, a bottle for Pepsi Cola or somebody, is I've got so many criteria that a lot of times I find I'm more creative the more criteria I have. It's like pushing me and pushing me. It's pushing me to really challenge myself and really do something. So I, I get you know, thrilled about it. You know.